think that I should calm down And that I'm overthinking everything about you And that we're good the way we are Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW or the Weight Watchers Blue Plan. Happy Wednesday, it's Wednesday so it's what I eat in a day. We have a fun day today. I'm going to give you guys a flooring update. I have a really terrible story to share with you. I got some new clothes I wanna share. It's just going to be a really good day. Oh, and did I mention we're doing a copycat recipe for dinner that was out of this world. So if you're excited for another What I Eat in a Day on WW, give this video a big thumbs up. And if you're new or you haven't yet subscribed, I'd love to have you. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell right next to it so you never miss a single video. Check out the description box down below for not only my recipe ebook, but I just released my lunch ebook as well. 15 WW friendly, low calorie, all plan points included lunches is newly released and it's incredible. So get your hands on that as well as the breakfast ebook if you haven't already. They are only $15 and again have 15 recipes. Nutrition coaching is also down in the description box. I offer personalized to you macros and calories. Highly recommend as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching if you'd like to chat with me directly. Links, discounts to everything I shared with you in today's video as well as all of my other favorite things and of course my Facebook group are also down in that description box. So definitely check it out before you go. So let's jump in to what I eat today on WW. Welcome to this week's What I Eat in a Day. I am about to have my breakfast. Let's go through all the points for my breakfast. So this is my sausage biscuit that I meal prepped last Monday. This is my last one. These are so good. I just warmed them up for about 30 seconds. They are the perfect little accompaniment for my breakfast. And then here I have one of the Good Culture cottage cheese cups that I picked up in this last week's massive grocery haul. I was so excited that Costco had these back so excited and then just some organic blackberries so it is three points for the cottage cheese and then it is five points for my biscuit so my breakfast is eight points and then you saw me fill up my Starbucks cup so I forgot to fill up my gallon water bottle last night so I did it first thing this morning I wasn't sure how cold the water was so I decided to go ahead and add a little ice to my cup before filling it with water I know I'm going to get several questions on my shirt my necklace so my necklace is actually from Kendra Scott I bought this last time I was in San Diego but you probably can find it on their website if I can find it I'll link it down below for you and my shirt is actually from Amazon. This shirt is absolutely adorable. I picked up two different styles, this one in black. It is a longer tunic, which I really like. You can wear this with jeans or leggings. You could even wear it with bike shorts. It is a nice, soft, heavy, thick material. Sometimes when you buy clothes on Amazon, it's kind of a crapshoot what you're going to receive. Sometimes they're really good quality. Sometimes they're horrible quality. This is nice and thick. It is true to size. It fits really well. Like I said, it's very soft, very flowy, very affordable. So the shirt I'm wearing today is actually the cold shoulder one. Again, I got this one in black. It does come in a ton of colors. I'll make sure I link it down below for you. And then I went ahead and picked up this super cute tunic in red as well. As we move into fall into the holiday season, 
I love wearing red. Red is one of my favorite colors to wear with a really pretty bright red lip. So I went ahead and picked this really nice tunic up in red as well. This would be really cute layered under a jacket, maybe a denim jacket or a black jacket or a nice long cardigan or sweater for fall or winter. So I thought I would sh share with you the two tops that I picked up from Amazon. Like I said, they are both true to size, fantastic quality, really, really good price. I will link both of them down below for you. So now I am going to jump into my breakfast. Palmer, hey, you wanna play ball? Buddy. Palmer, look, 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 come here, come here. Ready? Let's go get it. Go get it. Get it. Bring it back to mama. Bring it back. <gasps> Good boy. No, bring it back. He's not the best at bringing it back. So we usually have a backup ones. Palmer, look it. Look. Good job, bud. Put your little ears back. Good job. So I'm going to have my morning snack. It's about 9.15. I'm a little bit hungry. I've been cruising right along with my day. So I'm going to start with the Brew Doctor Kombucha in Superberry. This has raspberry, blueberry, goji berry, and oolong tea. It's 60 calories, three points on WW. I count this as one point, as you know. And tis the season for pumpkin spice. Verb just came out with the pumpkin spice latte verb bar. I have not tried this yet. I just actually received these in the mail yesterday. I cannot wait to try this out with you guys live. We'll do a live taste test, but the Verb Energy Bars are 90 calories, three points on all plans. They contain 65 milligrams of natural caffeine derived from green tea. So they're a really good pick-me-up, whether it's mid-morning, afternoon. I love these pre-workout, especially fantastic. If you just want a little something in your stomach before you work out and that extra 65 milligrams of green tea or caffeine is really, really good pre-workout. It's great post-workout. I love these. I would say that I have a verb bar pretty much every single day. And again, I've never tried the pumpkin spice latte. So we're going to try it together today. That is three points. And then my kombucha is one point for verb. If you haven't tried them yet, they do have a sample pack where you get a full bag of verb bar similar to this one. There's 12 bars in the bag. You can get this with the link in the description box for only $10. And then verb throws in four or five other bars in different flavors for free so that you can try them out. I highly recommend trying them. You can't beat it for $10 for an entire sample bag. You can find flavors that you you really like you can go reorder anytime and if you have ordered from a verb before you can order these pumpkin spice latte directly from their website but we need to try these out to see if they are as good as the other verb bars oh wow that smells like pumpkin pie 10 out of 10 I mean verb did it again so, so good. Just the right amount of spice, very pumpkin-y, very fall. Wow, so soft, so, so, so good. I will make sure I link verb down below for you. Take advantage of the sample bake for $10 if you're a new customer. If you just want another refill of flavors, highly recommend pumpkin spice latte. So here is my lunch for today. It is about 11. 30 a.m. I'm having one of my ham and cheese pockets that I made in Monday's meal prep. These are incredible. If you haven't seen that meal prep, I'll link that video down below for you. It is six points for the ham and cheese pocket. I'm going to have some organic raspberries. These raspberries are delicious. These are from Costco. And then I'm having a Oikos triple zero vanilla yogurt. I topped it with some of this Imperfect Foods organic apple crisp granola. That granola is so delicious. I will link in Perfect Foods down below for you with $10 worth of free products. So you can actually add this granola to your cart for free. So, so, so good. There's no minimum order within Perfect Foods and it just helps prevent food waste. So this is going to be my lunch for today. I'm working on like my fourth cup of water. So I'll go ahead and put calories and points here on the screen for you. You're a good job at playing your ball. Hi, little you. Hi, baby girl. Oh yeah, you guys have been outside most of the day. It's hot out here. 
It's in the 80s. It's definitely warm out today. It is in the high 80s. The dogs have really been out here most of the day. I have a coaching call here pretty soon, but I thought I'd quickly show you how the floors are coming along. They're coming along. We're probably 70% of the way done with the floors. We still have the molding that has to get put on. They're actually doing that at the end of the project. I'll also share with you guys the unfortunate circumstances when it comes to our flooring. But let me show you how it's looking and then I'll share the terrible story with you. So here's what the floors look like. They're actually really pretty, very rustic. So the floors are done basically on the main living level of our house. You can see they're done in our bedroom. That was actually where they started. I shared that with you guys last week. And then they've done the floors in the formal living room, which has all the furniture for the regular living room in it until we have the chance to move it back. But it's really, really, really pretty. It's everything that we wanted it to be. It's been a bit of a nightmare, not gonna lie. I'll share that with you guys, but I thought I'd give you a quick update. So what they're working on now is the laundry area and down the hall into the mud room. So that's the area that they're focusing on now. But I am imagining by the end of this week, we should be done. Of course, I'll give you guys an update next week in the What I Eat in a Day, but let me share with you guys this crazy story. Okay, let's have a little bit of story time. I am working on my sixth glass of water. I'm over halfway done with my gallon for the day. I have a Zoom call for coaching here in about a half an hour, but I wanted to share with you guys the horrible, horrible story about our flooring. So originally when we decided to put new floors in our house, we had several contractors come out. I think we had three or four come out and give us bids. Well, all of their prices were pretty similar. So we ended up choosing the contractor that we related with the most. We really liked him as a person. He had a pretty short timeline to get started just a few weeks out versus a couple of months out and just everything just fell in the place with him. So we really liked him. So we chose him as the contractor to do the flooring. We negotiated a price with him and we ended up hiring one of my friends from Jazzercise's 15 year old son to come and rip out our old flooring. The contractor wanted to charge us $24 to $2,500 to rip out our flooring and we were able to hire my friend's son who's done work for us in the past. We love him. He's reliable. He's a hard worker. We were able to hire him for $20 an hour. So when it was all said and done, it cost just over $200 to have all of the old flooring ripped out in our entire house on the main level, as well as the carpet in the two rooms. We are just going to put the new flooring over the old flooring in the mudroom and in Troy's bathroom, just because it's easier than having to take it out and the flooring in the mudroom area is actually glued to the concrete. So it would have been really hard for us to get that flooring out anyways, really nearly impossible. So it cost much less to have Owen, my friend's son, come and do the flooring. Well, when the project is supposed to start, the contractor and this other gentleman show up to our house. Well, they both start working on the flooring in our bedroom and shortly thereafter, maybe an hour later, the contractor who we hired came out and let us know that he was leaving and that this gentleman, Charles, was taking over our job and that he wouldn't be the one putting in the flooring, that this Charles person would be putting in our flooring. So initially, I'm I'm a little bit confused and maybe a little bit annoyed because we hired him under the impression that he was the one that was going to be doing the project. And then on the first day, he's here for an hour and then he lets us know that this other person is taking over the job. He's okay, he's okay. He is kind of rough around the edges. He's pretty short, he complained a lot. I mean, he complained a lot pretty much throughout that entire first day. He really just was complaining about every little thing that he had to move or that was inconvenient to him. So that was a little bit frustrating, but he was doing a good job putting in the flooring. So he works that entire first day in our bedroom, lets me know that he'll be back the next day with someone else to help him kind of be a grunt, run back and forth with the boxes of flooring and that he would get started in the formal living room. So the next day he comes back and we're talking about the next step from there. Once he finishes the formal living room, in order for him to connect the floor, since it's a floating floor, he has to kind of stair step and stake or the flooring. So he has to go in a certain order of room. So he says that the next stop for him 
would actually be our laundry area. So I said, okay, well, what you'll just have to figure out a way to move the washer and dryer and this other refrigerator that's in that area out of the way so that you can put the flooring in. And he says, uh, I'm not moving all of that. Well, when we had the original general contractor come out and give us the bid, he said they move all of the big stuff, just not the knickknacks. So I told him that. I said, well, we were told that you move all of the big stuff. Now, I'm happy to help any way that I can. If Troy's home, he's happy to help, but that's part of the agreement is that you move the big stuff. He was visibly annoyed that I asked him to do that, and I was trying to push him for a timeline to be finished with the flooring as well because... Honestly, it's a pain. It's a pain to have to corral the dogs. It's a pain to have someone in your house. It's loud, it's dirty. So he was getting more and more annoyed as the conversation went on and more and more short with me, which not only frustrated me and made me upset, but made me feel pretty uncomfortable because I'm in my own home by myself with this person who's visibly annoyed at me. So that night when Troy comes home, I give him the rundown of what happened throughout the day. Well, he's obviously upset of the way that Charles treated me as well as him complaining about moving the big pieces of furniture that he that we originally agreed that they would move. So he called the general contractor and just kind of told the general contractor how the couple days have went. And he basically said that this Charles person is a really good flooring installer, but he complains all the time, which listen, I knew that the first day in. So he tells Troy that he's going to call Charles and have a conversation with him and remind him that yes, you are moving big things and you just need to watch your tone and, and be a little more friendly with the customer. So the next day he comes and the minute he walks in the door, I can tell that he's annoyed. He's mad, he's annoyed, he doesn't even say hi to me, which normally he does. So instantly I'm uncomfortable in my own home again. And he has his helper with him again this day. So now he's moving his way into the kitchen. So I said to him, I'm gonna go ahead and get all the, I'll bring the dogs in the bedroom with me and just knock on the door if you need anything and I'll keep them corralled in the bedroom. So that's exactly what we did. Well, a couple hours later, he knocks on the door and he asks me if we have a dolly. And I said, yeah, there's one out in the garage. If you can't find it, let me know. So he goes out to the garage and knocks back on the door and wants me to see the dolly and confirm that that's the dolly I was talking about. So I open the door, shut the door, leave the dogs in the bedroom, and I go out into the kitchen, and I said, yes, that's the dolly, that's the only dolly we have. And he says, oh, am I gonna get in trouble if I break your dolly? Is Troy gonna call Adam, who's the general contractor, and complain again? So again, instantly I'm uncomfortable, instantly I'm put in an awkward position because I'm the customer, I shouldn't have to explain why we call the boss or the person in charge of the job. So I just simply said, no, you won't get in trouble if you break the dolly, it's 10 years old. So he's in the process of doing the kitchen, so he needs to move out our refrigerator. So I decided before he moves out the refrigerator, I'm gonna let the dogs out. So I let the dogs out the back French doors and he's, in the process of wheeling our refrigerator out and he's measuring to make sure it's gonna go in between counters okay and he starts wheeling it out and all of a sudden the helper goes, stop, stop, stop. You almost took off the handle on the cabinet. So apparently he pushed our refrigerator into the knob on our cabinet. So I said, stop, stop, you're gonna ruin, you're gonna break my cabinet. I'm standing there while the dogs are outside and he's just annoyed and complaining the whole time about the fridge and how it's hard to move and get out of the way. He ends up making it work and I let the dogs in and I went in the bedroom and I called Tori and I said, I can't be out there because it stresses me out. He's like running into things. He's not being cautious with the fridge. Like he's just rolling the fridge around willy nilly. And there isn't a lot of space in our kitchen to roll the fridge around willy nilly. He keeps working. And a little bit later, I go out into the kitchen to get something to drink. And he corners me, corners me in the kitchen and says, what did Troy say when he called Adam? And he wanted me to basically tell him the entire conversation that Troy had with his boss. And I just basically told him, listen, there's a few things that we had questions on or concerns or maybe some miscommunication. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying not to make him more upset because I'm by myself with him. But he hounded me for a good 10 minutes about the conversation. And then he says two things at the end of that conversation. He says, do you have a pen and paper? And I said, yes. He said, I'm going to give you my phone number. And the next time you have a complaint or Troy wants to bitch about me, he can call me directly and insisted on giving me his phone number, which was very awkward and weird. The whole thing was awkward and weird. And then he walks away and says, when I get mad, I can be a real a-hole. And I immediately said, on the flip side, Charles, this is our house. 
Our dogs live here, we live here, and we want things a certain way. So at this point, I'm even getting a little bit annoyed, and I'm feeling threatened at this point when he's saying that, you know, he can become a big jerk when he's mad. And now it's like 3.30 in the afternoon, and he stops working at 4.30. So I just go outside with the dog so that I can keep my eye on him, but also be away from him. Troy, he leaves. Troy comes home. When Troy comes home, I let Troy know what had happened. And of course, he's livid because I'm uncomfortable and I'm putting this situation, it's unprofessional, and I shouldn't have to be uncomfortable in my own home. And then he looks at our fridge. And not only, not only is there sticky all over the floor from the bottom of our fridge, all over the new floor, and Charles tells me I have to clean it up, and I told him no, he can clean it up, there is a dent on the front drawer of my refrigerator. My refrigerator, if you remember, we got these brand new appliances about a year ago. They were perfect. They're only a year old. He dented the drawer from hitting it on the knob of the cabinet. He scraped the side of the door and the entire side of my refrigerator, the black plastic side of my refrigerator is dented and scratched up. So Troy instantly calls Adam and tells Adam what happened and basically tells him we don't want Charles back. He's not welcome in our home. We do not want him back in our home. So the contractor says, well, I'm going to come over right now and get his tools so that there's no issue with his tools. He doesn't have to come and get them from me. Like I will come and get them and give them back to him. So I left to go upload my video. And in the meantime, he came over and I guess he was stunned at the refrigerator. He basically said he's never ever dented a single appliance in over 20 years. He's never had anything like this happen. And he doesn't know if it happened because of negligence or because he was mad at us or both. But basically he says he'll either fix the fridge, replace the fridge, or he's going to end up doing our flooring for free because our refrigerator is a over $4,000 refrigerator. So he pulls Charles off of the job. He calls Charles, just lets him know that we decided to go with a different contractor altogether, just because we don't know if he's crazy which I know he's crazy, but if he's crazy enough to do anything or come back, he didn't want to pinpoint him specifically, but basically said that we were choosing a different contractor altogether and sent over a new um, younger gentleman a couple days later who's been amazing, who's super friendly, super nice, and been doing a great job on our floor. So as of right now, he's sending out an appliance repair guy to see if they can fix our refrigerator or order new panels for our refrigerator or if it's going to be replaced or the price is going to be taken off of what we owe. But it's been a nightmare. It's been horrible. It's been a nightmare. I spent days and days with this guy who was visibly annoyed and argumentative and threatening and I was uncomfortable. So I feel like now there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel because this new guy is great. But who's to say? Who's to say they already chipped up paint in our spare bedroom that they're going to have to fix. They're gonna have to buy paint retexture and fix that. I know it was just a mistake, but it just seems to be one thing after another. So, so we are looking forward to the day that the floors are done and we both agree that there will be zero. And I mean zero additional remodeling in any time soon, like pretty much forever. So that's an update on our flooring. And that's the horrible situation that we've been in. So cross your fingers for us that it just gets easier from here because honestly, I don't think it could get worse. Here is my afternoon snack. I just got off of my Zoom call, edited my meal prep, finished another glass of water. But what I have here, is I have one serving of the Kellogg Club crisps that I purchased at Costco. You can have 19 of the crackers for 140 calories and five smart points. So I have 19 crackers. And then I have two tablespoons for two points of the La Terrafina spinach artichoke and Parmesan dip. This little combination, this little gem right here is delicious. So my afternoon snack is a total of six points. For dinner tonight, we are making copycat P.F. Chang's Mongolian beef. This is one of the only dishes I really like at P.F. Chang's, and I'm so excited to make this at home. It is WW friendly, it's calorie friendly, and according to the recipe, this is better than P.F. Chang's. So let me show you what you'll need for tonight's dinner. You're going to need a lean cut of steak. This is flat iron. I would recommend either a lean cut flat iron or a flake steak. You'll also need some green onions, cornstarch, baking soda, minced ginger, rice wine vinegar, soy sauce, oil. We are going to pair ours with some jasmine rice, brown sugar, and minced garlic. 
So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and cut up our steak into thin strips. And then we're going to make up some marinade and pop this in the fridge so that it can marinate for about an hour or so. Steak is all cut up. I went ahead and pulled a bowl out to put together the marinade. So the first thing we're going to do is add half of a teaspoon of baking powder. This is a full teaspoon, so I'm adding half. I'm going to add one teaspoon of brown sugar. Now the recipe calls for regular sugar, but I'm gonna use brown just because I need this for another part of the recipe. One less item you have to have on hand. One tablespoon cornstarch. One tablespoon soy sauce and one tablespoon oil. I'm using avocado oil. Can you see that fuzzing, fizzing already? That's crazy. Okay, so one tablespoon of avocado oil. And then we're just going to mix this together. This is the marinade for our steak. I'm going to put all the steak into a gallon size Ziploc bag. And then I'm going to dump the marinade right on top of the steak. And what I generally do is seal up the bag the best that I can and then I kind of just squish the steak in with the marinade. We're also going to make up the sauce while our steak is marinating. First thing we're going to do is add four teaspoons of oil to a saucepan, two tablespoons of minced garlic, one cup of soy sauce, one cup of water, one and a half teaspoons of ginger paste or ground ginger, and one and two thirds cup brown sugar. This is the Lakanto golden brown sugar. It's actually my very, very favorite. I will link Lakanto down below for you with 15% off. Now we're going to put the sauce on the stove and allow it to cook until all of the brown sugar is melted. So the first thing we're going to do is get this sauce cooked up. You can see all the brown sugar at the bottom. We want that to fully dissolve. So we're going to bring it to a boil and stir continuously until the sugar has dissolved. I also have one cup of jasmine rice, two cups of water. I'm going to get my rice cooking as well. Once you have no more sugar crystals, when you run your spoon through your sauce, you're then going to add your cornstarch and water as a slurry into the sauce to try to thicken it up. You can see it's already starting to thicken. So I'm going to reduce the heat and I'm gonna let this simmer desired thickness and then we're going to just set it aside and get our meat cooking. So our sauce is the perfect consistency. So I'm just going to set it on the back burner and allow it to just rest while we cook up our meat. So I have my skillet here sprayed with some nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to add in my marinated steak. Well done is you like your steak to be. We like our steak pretty well done. So I'm just going to allow this to cook. Our sauce is set aside, our rice is going. Dinner is moving right along. The beef is looking really good. I would say that it's about medium rare at this point. I am going to allow it to cook a bit more. There is my sauce. It smells and looks so good. And then my rice is done as well. So as soon as the beef is cooked through, we'll add a little bit of the sauce to it. Well, a lot of bit of the sauce to it. And then we'll be ready for dinner. So this was actually pretty quick and simple. Once your steak is done, now we're going to go ahead and add in our sauce. Make it as saucy as you would like. Save the leftover sauce because you can add that to your rice. The point that I'm sharing with you, figure using all of the sauce so you can again add it to your rice. So here is my dinner for tonight. We have our copycat P.F. Chang's Mongolian beef. It smells amazing. I tasted the sauce dead on dupe to P.F. Chang's, maybe even better. So let's go over points and calories. So I went ahead and added a cup of rice to mine that is six points. Now the points I'm going to give you for the P.F. Chang's is without any rice. So however you choose to eat it, but just for the P.F. Chang's mixture, making it into four equal servings, it is five points on all plans and 188 calories, and that is without the rice. So my dinner is 11 points total. I can't wait to dig into this. Cannot wait. 
For dessert tonight, I'm having one of my no sugar added Clio. This is the peach flavor. It is super, super good. I guess it's less sugar, not no sugar added. I need to eat these up. They're about to go bad. I only have three or four left from the big Costco box. So this is going to be my dessert for 100 calories and three points. joining me on another what I eat in a day on WW. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today. We had a pretty fun day, lots of updates. This was a pretty long video because I wanted to share all the flooring updates with you, but if you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new or you haven't yet subscribed, I'd love to have you hit the subscribe button and click the bell right next to it so you never miss a single video. Don't forget to check out the description box down below for both of my recipe eBooks, nutrition coaching links, discounts to everything I shared with you today, and of course my Facebook group. Head on over, join us there. We'd love to have you. Happy Wednesday, friends, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.